Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Remnant at God's Church of Love Online every Saturday, every Tuesday. Now we are about to go into a warning I believe we've gotten from God that starts in the story of Jehoshaphat and Ahab. For some of you who are not hungry for the word, fast forward. I'll have the numbers there for you. But for those of you who want to hear the word, this story is important. We're reading pretty much the whole chapter. So here we go. Father, we ask you to anoint this word heavily. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Now, before I go any further, and I may skip around for the sake of time. What's happening is Jehoshaphat is on God's side. Ahab is not. Now, check this out. Not really. You know, you can say the, the Christian versus the carnal Christian. All right. Now, what the warning is, watch who you affiliate yourself with. You watch that. Because you can get caught up in the curses of the affiliate. You hear what I'm saying? When you affiliate yourself, when you align yourself with someone who God considers his enemy, you can short circuits, uh, circumvent, cut off, cancel, uh, uh, oh my goodness, you can, you can sabotage your ability to receive the blessings from God. So I want you to be aware of that fact. Be aware of that fact because a lot of times we think that those we hang out with, it's not a big deal because we're hanging out with them on our terms. What happens is when you benefit from the association, like Jehoshaphat did, he was getting all kind of goodies from Ahab. When you benefit, there's a prospering going on from the affiliation. There are times you end up doing favors out of gratefulness. And you have to be very careful. When you do favors out of gratefulness, you oftentimes cross the line. And now you're helping and you're on the side of the person that God considers his enemy. Now, all the time you might you might have been trying to win them to Christ. That's okay. But certain things they might want you to do, hands off, baby. Don't even go there. Mm, now you're stepping out of bounds. Now check this out. <laughs> and Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people is thy people, and we will be with thee in war. You know, like, you know, we're, we're bosom buddies. All right. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the king of Israel gathered together the prophets, 400 men, and said unto them, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, He was smart. Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that, that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto him, unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. This is Ahab talking. I hate him. For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is, is Micaiah, the name of Imla, the son of Imla. 
And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And, mm -hmm. and the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, fetch quickly Micaiah and the son of, and I can't pronounce these names. Okay, you know who they are. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Shanehiah, or Shanaha, or Shana, <laughs> had made him horns of iron and said, Thus said the Lord, With these shalt thou push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied, saying, Go up. To, I mean, they were all like, go on, do your thing. Now, let me tell the story because a lot of names I can't pronounce. When we get down to the crux of the matter, they get to that one prophet that he can't stand, that Ahab, the enemy of God, can't stand. And Ahab is upset because he does exactly he said, yeah, 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 go on and, you know, fight the war, do whatever, you you know, you're going to do. But mind you, this is going to happen and that's going to happen and that's going to happen. And, and the king of Israel shall die. And I mean, it was like, wow, it was bad news, baby. And he said, see, he's talking to, to, uh, to uh, Jehoshaphat. See what I mean? He always talks evil against me. So he goes there and they get ready to do the fight. Now, check it out. Jehoshaphat has enough sense to ask for help, and God protects him. But Ahab, he gets wounded, and at the end of the battle, he dies. Whoa. He dies from the wound. Now, he was told what would happen, and he went anyway. <laughs> so, and God knew he was going to go anyway and told him so through the prophet. He said, you're going to go. No matter what I say, you're going to go. So what I want to say to you is be very careful. When you get warning from different people, sometimes the people of God can seem like a killjoy. Imagine I'm dating a guy. Imagine this. Imagine I'm not dating anybody. I got my man. He's with the Lord. But imagine I'm dating a guy and Lynn, one of the members of our church, she's my age. She's got years of wisdom under her belt. And Andrea, she's a young woman, but she's got wisdom beyond her years. And the two of them are on my case calling me saying, you know, you really need to cut this guy loose, Pat. I think he's bad news. He's, you know, you already said he's half stepping with the Lord and, you know, you're trying to get him in with the Lord, but I don't know. I don't know if you should deal with this. Now they're warning me, right? I don't want to hear it, do I? Everything in my flesh recoils at the wisdom coming from the Lord through these two ladies. Lynn is getting on my case like a twin sister. And Andrea is sheepishly, respectfully begging me to leave that alone. She feels really like something's really bad is going to happen as a result of my association and affiliation with bad news, Mr. Bad News that's fine as wine in the summertime. Now, if I ignore their warning, what happens to my behind is on me. That's my fault. Why would I ignore their warning? Number one, here are some of the reasons we ignore their warning. Our flesh is longing, needy, and hungry. Yeah. And I want those lips on my lips. And I want his chest against my chest. And I want to lay with him in the bed. I want all the goodies that comes with dating and all the... Yeah. My flesh is in the way. When your flesh gets in the way, your wisdom deteriorates. Trust me. You know how they tease about men and they say their brains are in their pants? Yeah, that's what happens to women too. Right. 
So male or female, whoever you may be, watch who you associate yourself with. They can be deadly. There was a story of a, a woman who was on the road and she saw this snake, this wounded snake on the, on, in the middle of the road. She pulls the car over, picks up the snake ever so carefully, drives it to the vet as quickly as she can get there and asks him to do whatever, whatever he's got to do, she'll pay for it. He takes care of the, of the thing gets it back to where she can finish nursing it to, to its health, tells, tells her how to take care of it, where, where to keep it and all that, how to feed it. And, and that's what she does. She does everything. As she's doing it, she is becoming enamored by this beautiful snake. It's pretty. It's, it, you know, she just loves animals. So she's just enamored. And she starts petting and hugging and feeding and talking and singing. And as time goes on, this bond from her end, she's got a bond going on. And with this bond, check this out. She picks the snake up, pulls it to her bosom. She's getting ready to kiss the snake. And the snake latches on and bites. Oh no. It's a poisonous snake. It's venomous. Now she's weakening. And as she collapses to the ground, she looks at it and she says, I, I love you. I, I, I nursed you to health. I took you in. I fed you. I, I gave you your medicine. I loved you. I, I gave you all I could give. How could you do this to me? How could you return my love by killing me? And the snake looked at her and psst, you knew I was a snake. I'm a snake. In essence, that's what snakes do. You knew that when you picked me up in the first place. Some of you know you got a snake. You know it. Hmm. So fine. So fine. Oh, yeah. My baby, so doggone fine. And you cannot see past. You cannot see past those mesmerizing eyes and those moistened lips. You can't see. You're ignoring that rattler at the end of their tail. You're, ign you're ignoring the stinger, the venom at their fangs. You're ignoring it because it feels so good, baby. And he's so fine or she's so fine. Be very careful. Some of you get into business deals with people because they know how to dress. They're well-groomed. They know how to carry themselves. They are what you call a charmer. Hmm. We're going to get back to that word charmer, according to the Bible and according to Webster in a minute. Stay away from charmers. Those are the ones that are the, that are the most dangerous. They can almost have you hypnotized. You're so mesmerized by their charm. Be very careful about that. All right. Now, we're going to go to Philippians and then I'm going to tell you an, uh, I'm going to tell you a story of a dream the Lord gave me. It was a warning dream in the same line. Check this out. We're going to go to Philippians chapter 3. Starting at verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you and me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Mm. Now, for some of you who don't know what a concision is, it's a, it's a source of cutting, of slicing down, of, of, of deterioration. There are people like that. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. 
Unfortunately, there are many born again Christians that put all their confidence in their flesh. That's the sad part. Now, listen to this. All right. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of Hebrews as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I count loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. What he's saying is he was the chief of Jews, but he persecuted the church. That's what he's saying. He persecuted the church. Now, what he's also saying is all that stuff that he was and all the accomplishments he made, he counts but dumb. It's nothing, nothing to it because now he's in Christ Jesus. Hmm. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, self-righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection hmm. and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Hmm. Listen, what a lot of us don't realize is there are times where we have to go against what we want. That's being conformable. We're conforming to the ways of God. So we have to make sure that we do not allow ourselves to be conformed to the world, but to be conformed to God's ways by faith. And sometimes by faith, you have to obey till it hurts. Sometimes you have to suffer loneliness in order to obey God. Sometimes you have to suffer through boredom, extreme boredom, in order to obey God. But see, he doesn't allow any of those sacrifices of obedience to be unrewarded. He does not forget your labor of love. Remember that. Every sacrifice you do, baby, he's keeping the books. He knows. He doesn't forget it. Now, what you have to understand, though, is that a lot of times when you lean to your own understanding and you look at that pretty rattlesnake with all the pretty colors on its coat, you're not paying attention to that rattler. When that thing gets to rattling, baby, you better make way. Get out of its way. Leave it alone. But see, many of you won't pay attention to the warning signs. That's why some of you women and some of you men get caught up in abusive relationships. God has warned you every step of the way. But you look at their eyes and you're hypnotized. You got me hypnotized. Ah, massa, massa. You're so caught up, you can't even hear God. You don't even have, your ears have been shut down by the flesh, filling up your ear holes. And you're walking willfully right into the trap that Satan has laid for you. Willfully. Why? Because it feels so doggone good. Oh! Give me a break. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. God's good. He'll let you know when you're stepping out of bounds. He'll let you know. 
But you have to listen to this. Listen, listen. He will use God's people. He will use the saints of God that you barely know. He'll even use a stranger, whatever it takes to set up warning signs all along the way. You drive through a construction site. You got one construction worker telling you you got to stay in with, within the, this barrier here. You got a cop up front saying you can't go beyond this point. You got all kind of road signs and people directing traffic. That's what God does. Right. But sometimes you get a dingbat that hears it, sees it, understands it, but they know where they want to go. And they figure, I can, I can do this. Let me milk this cow. I can handle it. And they drive right on through the barrier and break the law and break the rules and get themselves all jacked up, fall in a big old ditch they didn't know was there. Right. And some of you, some of you have been in marriages that are traps. You're locked in, tied up, can't find a way out, seemingly. And every other week, you don't know when you're going to get your behind whooped or your money took. Bad English, but you got me. Some of you are in relationships with friendships that are business people. And they're, they're good at making that money, that almighty dollar. And they find it, it unscrupulous ways of making that money. But you ignore the, 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 the negative side. You ignore the sins. And you're like, here, let me give you 50 bucks. See if you can get me a thousand. Yeah, because you know how to play with money. Just give me the money. I don't want to hear the details. Just give me the money. Don't matter you don't know the details. You know where they're coming from. And God knows that you know. A little shaking and baking goes down. And next thing you know, the whole thing is coming down under the eyes of the government. And you're in it. And they name you as being in it. Ha! Huh. You got to be careful what you associate yourself with. Got to be careful. What happened with Achan when he hid the accursed thing under the ground? He hid it. He saw stuff that God said, don't touch. Touch not the unclean thing. He knew that those things were cursed, but the Babylonian garment was pretty. The thing of gold was prosperous. He was looking at all these goodies and he put all this stuff up under his tent. His family knew it and they went hush hush and kept the secret. Turned a blind eye. All right. All right. Hopefully we'll be able to make out like a fat rat down the road. No, they didn't. Down the road, they all died. They all died for one man's sin because they came into alignment and agreement with it. The depth, the sign in sign language for agreement is you touch the ear and you put the two fingers together. You're agreeing. That's coming into alignment. You don't agree with anything the enemy is doing. You don't warm yourself by the devil's fire, as my pastor used to say. Listen, 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 listen. Okay. 
So we're in the last days. There are going to be things that Satan will bring into your pathway. You got to listen to this and you got to be careful. He will bring all kind of little tricks and traps. I don't want to see you willfully walk, prance yourself up to the trap, play with it, and go on and let your foot get caught in it because there's some goodies right around that trap you get to enjoy for a hot minute while you're enduring the pain. It doesn't make sense. Or you go through a landmine. So, and why do you go through the landmine? Because there are big chunks of gold all along the way. And you know, you can really, you, you won't have to work another day in your life. And you're willing to chance the gold, I mean the landmines, in order to get your hands on a piece of something that you probably won't even live to enjoy. You're willing to take the chance. Don't play Russian roulette with your soul. Be very careful. You don't dabble in sin. You don't toy with sin. You don't tinker with sin. You leave that crap alone and everything associated with it. You leave it alone. You can't love God and love mammon. It's one or the other. God is not going to be your part-time lover, y'all. All right, now, <clears throat> I'm not trying to fuss. I'm trying to warn, so, okay, listen. Years ago, the Lord gave me a dream, and in this dream, there was a woman. She's a friend of mine now. Uh, her name is Edith, and she is in her 70s. She and I hang out. We go eat dinner, or I hang out at her house. We watch Hallmark movies. Very sweet lady, very sweet lady. She's she's truly a saint. And this woman in the dream, now this is a dream. I want you to hear this. The principle of the dream. In this dream, and I haven't forgotten the word charm. We're going to go to charmer in a minute. But in the dream, what ended up happening was she and I were on a ministry uh, drive. We had to go. We were on assignment to go to this man's house who was there with his wife, needed marital counseling, prayer, the whole nine yards. Their marriage was on the rocks. So we went there specifically for that. In the dream, it was so real. I'm telling you, it was so real. In the dream, the man was, he was very amiable, very sweet, very friendly. The wife she didn't have time. She was on the phone yakking away and she just waved us to the other room. So, you know, so we would go on and do what we had to do with her husband because she's on the phone. She ain't got time for us or, or him or any of that stuff that had to do with God. So here we are sitting in his den and he's sharing, you know, and we're talking, we're praying, whatever. And then he gets to the point where we're getting ready to go and he thanks us and Edith is saying, I'll wait for you. I'll, I'll be out in the car. She came in her car. I came in mine. So the man says, can I ask you a few questions? You have a few minutes? Sure. Now, why didn't he ask me that while she was there? Mm -hmm. But I'm not thinking. And he starts asking me if I was married and all the little questions guys ask when they're interested in you. And I'm ego tripping in the dream. I'm ego tripping like I would have when I was in my 20s. And I was dumb and young, young and dumb. Yeah, dumb diddy dumb dumb. And I'm 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 pigging out off of the ego trip. Oh, this man, he finds me attractive. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, so Edith blows her horn. He's asking me if he could have my phone number. Edith blows her horn. So I grabbed my purse and said, let me see what she needs. And I went and I leaned in the window and she looks at me very soberly. And she says, don't you think you should get in the car and, and we should go now? She knew it. She felt it in her spirit that something wasn't right. And in my spirit, I knew she was right. And because I wanted to obey God, I said, yeah, 
Yeah, I should. I'll get in the car. So wait for me. And she said, all right. So I got in the car. I started my car up. And once I took off, she took off. She watched me in her rearview mirror. I just waved at the guy. See, I got to go. Mm -hmm. I knew what was up. And I knew she was right. Here's the sad part. Some of you would have said, well, yeah, but he wants to ask me a few more questions. Go on. I'll catch up with you down the road. I'll tell you what happened. Sure you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you would have been annoyed by her doing that, thinking she was getting all up in your business. Huh? That's why the, the Lord has the body of Christ. When one part of the body is leaning, the other, the stronger part of the body pulls it up, makes it stand upright, walk straight. We have to be accountable to each other and for each other. We have to watch each other's back. But I'm, I'm like this now. If you are insisting on having it your way, go right ahead. I'll be here when you finish falling and you need help getting back up. But I'm not going to get between a dog and his bone. There are friendships that will end because one of them is so determined on feeding that flesh. Their, their, their God is their belly, their appetite, everything in their flesh they want, they must have. And they will not use enough self-control. They got it. But they won't use it because they want that more than they want the self-control, baby. They want the pleasure more than they want God's smile. That's what you have to be careful of. Wow. Okay, let's go to Romans. Whew, this is a warning message. And I don't know who it's for on YouTube or... Wow, this is crazy. Okay, Romans chapter 13. Okay, I'm just going to read. <laughs> Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The power that be are ordained of God. Okay. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation for rulers are not in for rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil wilt thou then be wilt thou then be not afraid of the power do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Verse 11. I'm skipping to, now is the time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer, then we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision that's the bottom line. Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. There are a whole lot of ways we can make provision for the flesh. 
going over somebody's house late at night to watch a movie when you know they are of the opposite sex or for some of you, the same sex. But the bottom line is, you know, you don't need to be alone with that bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. With that bad girl or that bad boy. Yeah, you don't need to be alone with that. You know it. You know, you need to keep your little hiney home and go on and suffer to the boredom of the night. Go to bed if you must. Talk to the Lord. Maybe that could do something for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, See, a lot of times we don't realize how we <clears throat> take chances, how we toy with stuff we should not toy with, how we associate ourselves with what we should not associate ourselves, ourselves with. There are certain movies you shouldn't watch when you know you have relationships you're trying to cut off because those movies and those songs and that type of music makes you think of that person or, or, or yeah, that, that, uh, that brick house over there. Yeah. And you, you think about the address. You think about the car. You think about the cologne. You think about the clothing. You think about the hair. You think about the, the, the muscles. I mean, you think about everything that makes you want to pick up that phone and say, hey, you want to hang out? <laughs> you want to go do this? You want to go do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to be very careful. Because there comes a point, uh, my friend used to do this example. Okay, she's a, a pastor. She used to say, when you tinker with sin, now watch what my hands are doing. When you tinker with sin, okay, this will be on video for those who can't see me now. When you tinker with sin, okay, now you're playing with sin now, all right? This is your hand. This is sin. So you tinkering with sin. And you pull away just in time. Oh, I got away that time. <laughs> I didn't do it. And you're dancing around the neighborhood. No, no, I'm going home. I'm being good. No. No. <laughs> See, I got this. Oh, no, 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 let go. Sin's got a hold of you now. And with sin having a hold on you, oh my goodness, what are you going to do? You can't pull away. You really got a hold on me. I said, you really got a hold on me. And he does. Sin has a hold on you. And now you're locked in, tied up, tangled up, and you can't break free. Now you're in bondage. It becomes a strong hold, and you're panicking, and you're scared. And oh, no. And every time that woman touches you, every time that man kisses you on your neck, Every time that business person flashes a dollar bill and another another business venture in your face. Every time somebody wants you to go with them to the gambling shack or to Vegas. You go every time. Every time. Because your resolve has been broken down so now they can let go of you and you're still right there at their beck and call under their control under a trance because they have charmed you and you have given in and played with the charming and now you're locked in. Let's look at Webster and let's see what he says about charm. This is deep. This is deep. A person with an attractive and engaging personality hmm, who uses this to impress or manipulate others. All right. Let's look up the word wizard. Wizard, a man who has magical powers, especially in legends and fairy tales, or a person who is very skilled in a particular field or activity. All right. Now let's keep going because we're not done with wizard. <clears throat> okay. We also have to look at the fact. Let's look at, um. let me see at magician. Same description, a person with exceptional skills in a particular area, a person with magical powers. All right. Now, 
What you're not realizing, here we go. Let's go with the thesaurus. Another word for magician, sorcerer or sorceress, witch, wizard, mm, mm, mm. warlock, enchanter. What's another word for enchanter? Charmer. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, this thing is crazy because what God says in his word is to avoid such people. I'm going to check this out real quick, make sure if I got this right or not. All right. Yes, 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 yes. This is the one. Okay. I'm going to read this. This is Jeremiah chapter five. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Mm. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Be very careful that you don't get turned over to a reprobate mind. Be very careful that you don't harden your heart against the people of God that God uses to try to get you back in the right way. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish for they know not the way of the Lord nor the judgment of their God. I will get me into the great men and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Therefore, wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Every one that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. When I have fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's house. They were as fed horses in the morning. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord, and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel, the house of Judah, have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, it is not he. Neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see sword nor famine. And the prophets have become wind and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people wood, and it shall devour them. Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far. This is the part that made me cry last night. Because this can be an individual message. This can be a national warning. I will bring a nation upon you from far. O house of Israel, saith the Lord, it is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. They quiver 
Their quiver is as an open sepulcher. They are all mighty men, and they shall eat up thine harvest and thine bread, which thy sons and thy daughters shall eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thine herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities, wherein thou trustest with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. And it shall come to pass when you shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, Like as ye have forgotten me and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah saying, hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not, fear ye not me? See, a lot of people don't fear God. That's the biggest problem. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet... Can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain both to the former, both the former and latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait. <clears throat> As he that said it snares, they set a trap. They catch men. Ah, ah, ah. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Woo! Mm, mm, mm. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. Wonderful is not beautiful. In this case, wonderful is like, wow, that's horrible. The prophets prophesy falsely. Mm. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? That right there made me cry last night because it took it from us as individual people dealing with stuff that we shouldn't tinker with to a nationwide incident that could come to pass because this is running so rampant in society nowadays. There is no fear of God. That's the biggest problem with us. There is no fear, no reverence, no honor. There is no desire to obey, to hear, to pursue, to seek, to listen to. There is no hunger for him or his righteousness. There's no hunger for his word. No hunger whatsoever. We're in a dangerous, precarious place. For those who are not really walking with God, for those who are playing church, playing religion, taking chances after chance after chance, counting on the mercy of God. But let me tell you, his word says, my spirit will not always strive with you. I've, had, I've heard parents say with a belt in their hand, you got one more time to do that. One more time, and it's, your behind's going to be mine, baby. Some parents will say, I brought you in the world, I'll take you out of the world. And I'd rather get a whooping from a parent, which I have gotten, 
Didn't do me any damage. Did me some good. Kept me from a lot of trouble. Because I knew there was a borderline that I needed. And I needed to not step out of bounds here. But when it comes to God, I do not want to find myself in the hands of an angry God. I do not want to take that chance. I would rather be alone and lonely and have many nights of boredom for the rest of my life than to lose out on God for two for a two second nut, than to lose out on God for popularity with people in high places that do unscrupulous things because I want to be in with the in crowd, with the yuppies, with the with the uppity ups, than to get caught up with some fool that I know doesn't mean me any good. Some of you want to get caught up with a, a, a woman that you know it hands off. You know it. You know she doesn't want you for anything but your money and your honey. But she doesn't want you, and you know that. But you think so little of yourself, you're ready to bow to all her rules rather than obey God and suffer a little loneliness a little longer. See, the loneliness is not going to hurt you. Sin will. You have to determine where your heart is. That's where you have to ask God to help you, fill you with his Holy Spirit. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us navigate through this sinful world. Because the Holy Spirit warns, the Holy Spirit keeps, the Holy Spirit gives us the power to obey what our flesh does not want to obey. The Holy Spirit quickens our conscience, our mind, our heart. The Holy Spirit does a lot of things to help us make it. The Holy Spirit is a deck of cards stacked in our favor. We have gifts of the Holy Spirit where we can be warned. We can see things ahead of time. We can see into the supernatural. We can hear, feel into the supernatural. A whole lot of things come with the Holy Spirit. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, baby, you're walking into the enemy's camp, laying your weapons down, laying your armor as you go, leaving it on the ground. You going to be strong or you going to be a wimp? You going to be mighty in God or you going to be the devil's punk? And he just tell you to bend over and you bend over and he socks it to you, baby. Where's your allegiance going to be? Where your allegiance is, that's where your life is. When you're in the dark hours of the night and nobody's looking, that shows who you really are, who you're really committed to. Huh. Okay. God bless you to seek God. Seek him in his word. Learn what his... Learn what being in bounds is about, what being out of bounds is about by reading this word. You got to read the rules of the game to know how to play it. God bless you and Lord have mercy on this country as you have mercy on your people. In Jesus' name, we're in the last days. We don't need, we don't need any more problems. Crazy stuff is already going on out there. We don't need to open the floodgates and say, come on in. Destroy, destroy, destroy. You don't need that. Decide who your God is, please. Okay. God bless you. Remember, seek God. Pray to God. Cry out to God. Ask for help. Go to God's people at the worst end of your game. Get help. Get prayer. And at some point, there must come a change. Repentance means change. You're changing direction. You're changing activities. You change diametrically opposed to what used to be. You cannot keep doing the same thing expecting new results. That's considered insanity. God bless you. I'm done.